sadly, the cross doesn't mean what it means in America. Yeah, for for the local people, like if you ask them what they think about cross, they will say, what do you think if I will go with a necklace that have an electric chair on my neck? Mm. It's just a way to kill someone. All right, welcome back to another episode of Center for Israel. We have two amazing people with us, Ilya and Guy. Hey. They are a part of the congregation Beit Hillel and Ashdod, and I'm excited to talk to you about living <laughs> in Israel as uh, people who've been there pretty much since the beginning. So you were born in Belarus, right? but you moved to Israel when you were two. Right. Not by my decision. Not by your decision. Yeah. So that's the problem with, with when you're two. You just don't have any freedom. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, Guy, you were born in Israel. Yes, sir. So uh, I want to talk to you about growing up in Israel because I think for a lot of the older generation, the the spectacle of Israel and becoming a nation nation again was kind of this just very unique time in history. This, mm. you know, this prophecy that has been unfolded. But now we're a few generations removed from that. And it now it feels like an established nation. And I talk to people that are my age or younger, and it's like, oh yeah, Israel. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, Israel hasn't been a country for more than 75 years. And they're like, really? Interesting. <laughs> you know, which that speaks to how well we know our history here in, in the United States. <laughs> uh, but what is it like growing up in Israel and now being a part of the Western church? What's that feel like being a part of like the Holy Land? Does it oh, wow. feel that way? What does it feel like being a part of the Holy Land, but it's just where you were born and where you've lived for most of your life? Yeah, I think God, God will answer that. Yeah, so it's actually a surreal moment to realize actually that, man, I really live in the Holy Land. I mean, because yeah. for us as children, most Israelis, we kind of do take it for granted Yeah. because we say, okay, this is our land, this is our people. Yes, we're the chosen people and that's it. And we don't really realize the depth of it. Yeah. The only moment I think that the first time when I realized it really was uh, we have a tour guide in our congregation or church. Yeah. And uh, he's not your regular tour guide. He is a tour guide that gives you, you know, deep revelations. Yeah. The, the ones that make your pastor repent. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that make your pastor want to read his Bible. Right. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, once we were there in the West Bank at the north, near our city, actually, and uh, so many different places that you might have never heard of. Yeah. Or maybe some, somehow, somewhere, you heard it for like a minute or so. Yeah. And you go there and you explore and you see the depth of it and the whole story and the whole beauty yeah. and how it all connects to this wonderful big picture of our land of Israel. Yeah. So only then you get to realize, man, I live in a special country, you know? Yeah. I think for me, sometimes I even feel shamed mm. that we are the chosen nation because I grew up there. Yeah. I see the political situation, the wars, the everything, the daily life. And... I can't understand why God chose us. Yeah. It's it's not the best nation to choose, you know? Yeah. But he have his plan, and yeah. you can see it. You can see how he promised that those who will bless you, I will bless. You can see all of that in the Bible. Yeah. And that's interesting. So sometimes I do feel shame because you, like Christians from abroad that come to Israel, they want to see, I don't know, big churches and lots of people that know Jesus. But no, here is the opposite. Yeah. You come to Israel and there is less than... 5% Christians, that yeah. Messianic Jews who believe in Christ. And that's weird. Yeah. Because, I mean, Jesus come out from here. Because it all started there. Yeah, it start, it's it's mine before it was yours, you know? Yeah. And here you are coming and you see that there is no Christians, that there is no people who believe in Christ. And I don't know, for me, I like, I feel like, wow, I have so much work to do. Mm. Because here in the state, for example, you have so much Christians, so many people, so much people who believe yeah. and who know who is Jesus, like truly, and not yeah. because in Israel, if you grew up in Israel, you'll know that Jesus, he is some kind of wizard or something weird. He yeah. he's a liar, and because of him, we've been suffering and all of yeah. our history, all our backgrounds. And yeah, yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, and for you know people listening, I have so many conversations with. Christians who they don't understand the Christian history mm. of Christians in Israel. And so when I tell them, you know, if if a Jewish person sees a cross, they don't see 
salvation and life and peace. Oh, no. <laughs> not at all. Not and at they're all. like, why not? Oh, no. And it's like, well, because Christian history for 2,000 years has been pretty terrible yeah. Oh, yeah. regarding Israel and the Jewish people. And yeah, God has done you know great things w- with you know, the Christian church and Christian people, uh, but there's been a lot of terrible black stains uh, on the on the Christian church. Yeah. And, and sadly, the cross doesn't mean what it means in America. Yeah, for for the local people, like if you ask them what they think about cross, they will say, what do you think if I will go with a necklace that have an electric chair on my neck? Mm. It's just a way to kill someone. Mm. And it's it's weird for us. Yeah. So the cross, it's not the same meaning. Yeah. And when the opposite, when you say something about the cross, so we all we're gonna close because we're afraid because of the history of yeah. the Holocaust, right? The Inquisition, the Crusades. Yeah. And you're like, man, that brings pain to my life, to yeah. my family. Yeah. And yeah, so that's that's make it more fun to evangelize in Israel, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I think that's something that the church, as Western Christians, we have to own. It's not mm. that that you guys as as Jewish people have this bad interpretation of the cross. Mm. We caused you to have a terrible representation of the cross, but we have to own that history that it, we didn't understand what God was saying. We didn't understand the, yeah. the culture uh, that the Bible was written in and to and for and yeah. by, <laughs> and we just, we, we tried to replace it with, well, we're, we're the chosen people now, and it's all about the church. And replacement theology, you know, <laughs> the dangerous theology that the church kind of replaced yeah. Israel, it's not as aggressive today, but it's still living dormant in the minds it's of... It's going slowly, slowly, you know? Yeah, of so many Christians. It just, yeah. it's, it's not that they would say, yeah, I believe that we replaced Israel, but when they speak about theology, it's there. Yeah. Do you yeah. do you see that a lot when you come to the States or when you interact with pastors or Christians? Do you kind of see, hear things that you're like, yeah, that's replacement yeah. theology. Yeah. We've been talking about that, and maybe they don't know even this term, replacement theology. Yeah, totally. But... They are having like, okay, so that now it's the time of the church and now it's the time of us as Christian to raise up and kind of, you know, you put, you're not saying that openly, but you're just taking Israel and you're putting him behind the scenes. Yeah. It's in the Old Testament. Yeah. it's all, Yeah. Right. It's Old Testament. It's not the New Testament. I'm yeah. living now by grace and not by the law. Right. Yeah. So I don't need them. Yeah. And that's kind of dangerous. Oh, totally. That's kind of gen- dangerous because Jesus, he came not to change something but he came to fulfill the law yeah and for you to understand what he came to fulfill you need to read you need to understand the law (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah the torah right (laughs) yeah well man there's so many places that i feel like we can go um tell me about your story so in in israel when you turn 18 you have to serve in the idf yeah you have to, you know, it's, it's not an, Israel's not a nation of citizens. It's a nation of soldiers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you guys, you guys have leaders all yeah. over the place. That's right. Um, but you have an interesting story of kind of how you grew up with this conflict between Israel and Palestine yeah. and, and, you know, the Jews and the Arabs. So tell me about that. Well, I grew up in Israel and in Ashdod. So in our city, I, we had few, we call it operation, not wars. So yeah. we, call, we we had few operation rockets flies, people dying, you know, and all of that. It's what I thought. It's because of the Arabs, the radical Muslims. Yeah. And for me, there there was no difference between radical Muslims and Arabs or just people who want to live. Yeah. And in Israel, we call it free hate. We just hate them for nothing. Yeah. You know, I don't know you, but I hate you. Yeah. And of course, there is a reason because he tried to kill me and people from their side tried to like, just take out all my country. Yeah. And that's how I grew up. And as a Christian, I knew that my mission is to come to the military, have my gun and kill all of them. Mm. As a good Christian, I was, well, I thought that I was a believer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then when I started the military... I still had this mission I because I know that that's from God. That's from the Lord. I need yeah. to, you know, to stand for my country. Yeah. And, of course, to defend my family and my friends. Yeah. And then on one conference, that was a huge, like, that was a big thing and a big deal in my life until now. Yeah. Uh, 
we came to the conference and then all of a sudden I'm seeing that there's Arabs in this conference. Mm. And that was weird. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> That's my conference, you know? Yeah. And I, be I became, you know, to be co more cautious. Yeah. So I looked around and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be the guy who will stop the next terror attack. I will be the Superman, you know? Were you kind of on edge at this conference? Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. And I've been, you know, with my back to the wall to see everyone. Yeah. And, and then when we start the, the worship, so I start to worship and it's kind of, I kind of calm down. And it was good, my time with the Lord. And then all of a sudden they did a huge mistake. They just switched the worship teams from Hebrew to the Arabic. Mm. And the Arabic worship start. And here, I can't explain you the the stuff that happened to me, it was a warfare. I was in a, inside a warfare mm -hmm. because my mind telling me this, I'm sorry to say that, but this ugly language, this language that only cursed me and these people that only try to kill me, mm -hmm. they not allowed to worship my God, my Jesus. It's my faith. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. But from inside my soul, Oh my gosh, it was like my soul was rejoicing. You know, there was some music, right? The thing, yeah. nine, nine, nine. <laughs> I just want to dance. Yeah. And I'm like, what's going on? My mind told so you're me. You're wrestling within yourself. My mind tell me it's impossible. And my yeah. soul tell me that's ours. I don't know Arabic, like the Christian Arabic, okay? I know courses, some in Arabic because they cursed me during the military. Yeah. But I don't know what they're singing about. Probably about Jesus. Yeah. But I feel by the spirit, because we have the same spirit. And I feel, okay, that's ours. That's mine. I like, they worship my Jesus and my God, he deserves his glory. Yeah. And that was super weird. I didn't know how to react because I really, I had two people inside of me, <laughs> you know, the bad and, and good guy. Yeah. And, and yeah, so it was super weird. And during the message, I, I just can't understand what the guy t talking about because I don't care. I want to understand what's going on inside of me, you know, what, yeah. what, what's going on? Yeah. And then at the end, he asked us, like, let's go pray one for each other. I said, no way. <laughs> mm -mm. I'm not going to pray. I, I have a situation here. <laughs> I need to be prayed on, you know? <laughs> yeah. And someone came to me. And when she came, it was so weird because she don't know Hebrew that much. I don't know Arabic. My English was bad. So we just decided to pray. And she prayed in Arabic and I prayed in Hebrew. And I felt like all the 16 years wall that have been built during all my life. Yeah. Just God did something like that. And it's all crashed. Yeah. It's all gone. Wow. I was like, I understood nothing what she prayed. Yeah. Probably she understood nothing what I pray about. Yeah. But that was so strong and so powerful. And just that, that changed my heart yeah. for me. And I understand, okay, something happened. Yeah. I don't know what, <laughs> yeah. but something huge happened. Yeah. And of course, we know the verse, love your enemy, right? Bless your enemy. Yeah. It's really easy to read it. Bro, yeah. without Jesus, there's no way that you're going to do it. Yeah. Like, no way. They're, they are enemies. Yeah. And for, for now, until for now, they're enemies. I'm still doing yeah. reserves and I need to deal with them. Yeah. But the way how I change my behavior, how I talk to them and how I treat them, it's, it was something that only God can do. Yeah. And then after that, what interesting, so I, I moved with my unit to the territories, to the West Bank, and I changed my behavior, and then all my unit changed their behavior. So you're 18, 19, you're scared, you know, you're holding your gun because all of each second someone can come and stab you, and yeah. you're really scared. You yeah. can, like, it's scary. Yeah. And all of a sudden, instead of holding my gun, I'm shaking their hands, and I'm saying, hey, how are you doing? Like, I have people that even wanted to drop me off at home. I'm like, sorry, I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. But that was, that was something like different, something wow. changed in me. Yeah. And then I saw how my unit behavior changed. Mm. So God not only want to change me, but he want to change everyone. Yeah. But he needs someone to start from. Wow. And from that moment, I, I got myself a mission. Yeah. Each time that I'm in some conferences or see Arabs, I want to meet them. Yeah. I want to show them love. Yeah. I met people from Gaza border that have been working in Israel. I've met uh, Christian, Arab Christians that I didn't know that there is Arab Christian. How come? <laughs> we, we have even pastor here that he's an Arab Christian and yeah. he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. And 
also I met a guy that 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 was a divine moment you know it was something big a guy he's from Lebanon and he served for his uh, Hezbollah is yeah. it right in English yeah Hezbollah for four and a half years and this guy tried to kill me and I tried to kill him you know mm. and all of a sudden we're standing and he's huge he's like wow he's tall <laughs> and all of a sudden he started to cry and we we're weeping and we're understanding okay something changed yeah and only through Jesus that's the biggest miracle and all the Arabs they actually said when they receive Jesus the first miracle it's the love towards Israel wow it's the love towards the Jews wow and I've been thinking why why is that big yeah because I think because of that's the best miracle that they can have yeah it's something in the DNA you know they it's haters. supernatural it's super yeah, it's not something that can yeah. come politically or right it's psychological you can understand that wow so yeah that's kind of quick about my story and that's huge for me yeah well that's that's that should be the greatest hope for anyone listening because that is the longest lasting conflict I think our world has ever seen <laughs> and yeah. I don't know how long we've been looking for an answer to the, <laughs> well, the Jesus Arab, will come yeah but it, Jesus is the answer but it, it's not yeah. something that has to happen when Jesus comes back and that's the only thing that's going to heal the conflict but Jesus can heal the conflict now right. kind of like the kingdom of God like right. you know we we sometimes think well the kingdom of God's going to come when Jesus comes back but Jesus said the kingdom of God is here yeah and so I, it reminds me there's a documentary called Hope in the Holy Land and it's about the Israel Israeli Palestinian conflict and you know say the the documentary is 2 hours mm -hmm. I'm like an hour and 50 in and I'm like, there's no hope. <laughs> like all I've seen is just how much they hate each other. Yeah. And I'm like, they titled the movie wrong because there is no hope in the Holy Land. <laughs> and then the last little, you know, you know, 10 minutes or so of the movie, you realize Jesus is the only hope. Which yeah. again, we know that, but you read you read the the words of Jesus about loving your enemy, but yeah. somehow it didn't it, it didn't work. It didn't you know, connect. It didn't click. And then you had a supernatural encounter. Yeah. So that's amazing. Well, uh, as we close, is there is there any other piece, guy or Ilya? Is there any other um, any other idea or burden that you guys have? If a Christian's listening to this, whether it's reading their Bible, praying for Israel, not understanding why Israel is important, any facet of that that you just feel like, man, I wish you, I wish you could get this. I wish you. Mm would just understand that little click that changes everything that maybe you, you've run into before? That's a good question, okay? Yeah, so uh, as long as I can remember, you know, my father has uh, friends from all over the world. Yeah. And the whole um, idea of how we understand the Bible is different because you have your own culture. Yeah. Of course, you have your own history and uh, your language, everything changes the yeah. perception of the Bible. Our lens is different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, as long as I can remember, you know, my dad has friends and always they have sent him some text messages of, hey, Israel, what do you think? This and that. Can you explain me this and that? And every time, of course, he does understand it. It's in own, his own language yeah. and uh, his own way of interpretation and stuff. But, of course, my dad has an Israeli insight to everything. Yeah. And of course, as I can hear you and many other guys, even myself, I can see it. Once I read the Bible in Hebrew and in another language, it's just totally different. Yeah. And it gives you different insights and yeah. it's as if the Lord can speak to you in many different ways. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's so good. I've, I've, always, I've always said when a Jew and a Gentile sit down to read together or talk about Whoa. Scripture together— it's different because we we think about scripture so differently and we interpret scripture so differently. And like you're saying, it's not right and wrong. Yeah. I think what the Western church brings to the table when we, if we sit down, down and read scripture, talk about scripture, is the Western church is really good at this spiritual understanding that it, it's it's more than just exactly what's on the paper. There, there's a deeper understanding. There's a revelation. There, there's a symbolic nature. I mean, <laughs> how often have we read the Torah and we've, we've found Jesus everywhere? And sometimes, you know, we can maybe reach a little bit, but a lot of times 
there was something, there was a foreshadowing. I think the Western church was really good at finding that. Oh, yeah. But the Eastern church and, and, and the Hebrew mind is very grounded. It is like, no, no, what? Don't overcomplicate. It's Israel. It's, yeah. And we're like, no, Israel is symbolic for, and it's like, no, 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 it's Israel. <laughs> it's the land of Israel. Yeah. And sometimes we need to get grounded back to the, the foundation. And sometimes we overcomplicate scripture and can twist and manipulate scripture because we want it to make sense to us. And I don't live in Israel, so I guess I'm going to, you know, make mm-hmm. this a spiritual truth or a, a figurative truth. But when you read with, you know, a, a Messianic Jew, yeah, they're going to challenge you, yeah, and they're going to bring you back down to reality. And I think that's so that's that's so of God to bring us together, right? Because you know, an an, uh, an Eastern perspective you might never realize the supernatural things happening because you're so grounded in just the the today and the conflict and everything happening but a western person without the eastern perspective is just going to be in the clouds somewhere and going to be separated from what god's trying to do on earth yeah what do you guys think i think the conclusion is you guys need to have a small jew at the backpack you know like at the back <laughs> like a, a Jew that we carry with us <laughs> right yeah to have a conversation with <laughs> because it's actually it's super super right yeah and it's super strong when when we are coming together because we are through Christ through Jesus we need to be together yeah mm-hmm. that's that's our purpose that's our yeah. goal and of course the amount of prophecies that's written about the Gentiles that will come to Israel and will provoke the jealousy in the Jews so guys I need you. We need you. Oh yeah, yeah. and time. that's that's really good. Yeah, and it's also I really like when people come to Israel, when uh, people from Europe, from the state, you have. I didn't knew that you have that, but you have the red mark Bible. When Jesus said something, it's in it's red. in red. Yeah, and it makes it make it feel like Jesus when he's talking, he's like kind of you know, ah, yeah, and he's like flying. Yeah, but when I see when Jesus is talking, I see like. A Jew guy, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's my bro. Yeah. With a big nose that work hard. Yeah. And and it's... Uh, so what I like to see is the 100% spiritual thing. Yeah. But also the 100% human yep. thing. That he was he was one of us. Yeah. And that's what it, that was important. Yeah. When we were coming to, together, we can bring the 100 and 100 here. Yeah. And it's totally. not 50-50. Yeah. It's going to be 200. That's going to be explosion, you know? Wow, that's good. I really love it. I've heard lots of Jewish people, when they share their testimony of, you know, reading the New Testament for the first time or reading Matthew, their first response is, he's so Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. But we read it and we, we don't really know what... Jewish people sound like or what how rabbis <laughs> teach. Right. And yeah. so we're just like, oh, that's the words of Jesus. But to a Jewish person, it kind of jumps off the page that, oh, he's really Jewish. Yeah. I like it. You can see it even through, let's take the uh the, the bone valley. valley the va- va- valley of dry bones. Valley of dry bones. Yeah. Right? Ezekiel. So in Ezekiel, and it's people, the, the Christians, there's lots of Christians who think that okay, that's the church, that it's time to arise. But it's written that these bones is the bones of Israel. Yeah. And this picture is really remind us the picture of the Holocaust. Mm. So this prophecy, it's about us and we take it personally and not, you know, you can take it, okay, it's Christian and it's, we need to rise, we need to shine. There's maybe a spiritual truth that we can all take. You see the spiritual truth, you can take it. Yeah. But there's some real There's a practical understanding as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't forget that. Yeah. Totally. And that's what makes us together and stronger. And that's what, for my side, from my perspective, there is no way. Thank you, first of all, thank you guys that you're praying for Israel, but I, I can't see Israel, all of Israel be saved. Mm. I know that it's written. Yeah. I can't see it. Yeah. Because I'm right here, you know. Yeah. But that's the supernatural thing that God will do and that God will do through our prayer yeah. and through our bonding, through our connection yeah. with the Jew and Gentiles. Yeah. And first time when, if you remember, I think his name Paul, right? When he came back from the Gentiles, is it Paul? Paul, or? like like Saul, like yeah, yeah. So when he came back from the Gentiles and he came back to Jerusalem, they've been asking like, "What are you doing? Yeah, why are you preaching to the Gentiles? Yeah." And he's like, "Well, I think I need to show you something. Yeah, because it's much stronger. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that we can do much 
better together. Yeah. And yeah. I like how you called him Paul and I called him Saul. Yeah. Like you called him by his Gentile I, name I've and tried, I called I've him. I'm trying to remember like how, how I say <laughs> it. Like, how, do you guys, how do you guys say it again? <laughs> Shaul? Yeah, right. Shaul. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's so good. Um, man. I think it's something that we, you talked about uh, provoking Israel to jealousy. Mm. You know, Romans 11. Yeah. The Center for Israel was really started because we all want to see all Israel saved. You know, that's the end of Romans 11. Hmm. And all Israel will be saved, which hey, sounds man. like this, it sounds like impossible. Yeah. Like, how does a whole nation get saved? Is this like a one moment <laughs> thing? Is this a progression? Right. I, I don't know. Right. But it says it pretty, pretty bluntly. All of Israel will be saved. But before that happens, the Gentiles have to provoke Israel to jealousy. Well, how the church has been showing Jesus yeah. is not oh, provoking yeah. any Jewish oh. people to jealousy. In fact, it's doing the opposite. When you see the cross, you see, I don't want any part of that. Yeah. So in order to eventually get to Israel being saved, we have to first have a relationship with God and a relationship with Israel that actually does provoke to yeah. jealousy. Uh, we 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 need Jewish people to say, I want that relationship with God. But for 2,000 years, Jewish people have looked at Christianity and said, I want no part of that. And we have to own that as the church. And that's part of our, our mission is we, we want to change the way that the church thinks about Israel and the Jewish people because, yes, we love them, but that can be such a, you know, just yeah. a, a, a... Some word there, you know. Yeah, a symbolic word, mm -hmm. a umbrella word, but yeah. what does it really mean to love them with God's love uh, and love them the way that God loves you. Uh oh, that's that's huge. <laughs> yeah. So so I hope that hope that people grasp that and <laughs> and begin to pray for you and, and build relationship with with you and other uh other Jews in the land that that you desire to partner with. Like mm. you said, we, we need you. Gentiles need Jews <laughs> and Jews need Gentiles. It's it's like the husband and wife. We need right. each other if we're gonna fully walk in unity. So Right. That's right. Love you guys. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having us.